So it's been a long time. You've suggested them as guests week in, week out for the last, like, uh, 18 months or something like that. So, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are finally on the Call Manita Show. Hey, Welcome. how's it going? Hello, how, how are you? Very well, thank you. Yourself? Very good. Yeah. Um, enjoying your, your visit to the UK so far? Yeah, very much. We just came over from uh, Stockholm. We were over there, and uh, those people are a little too smart for us. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, they seem just, really smart. It's just kind of unnerving to go to a foreign country where they speak your language better than you do. <laughs> Given that, uh, probably the best first question in the world is that we, we were going to move to South Park later, but just a quick question. What voices do you two do between, you, say, t and anything, you know, Team America, South Park, just, just what can you claim that you've done yourselves as voices? Uh, well, most in South Park, it's just about everything because, and it's really out of necessity. It's it's because we're changing the show at two, three, four in the morning, and we don't want to deal with calling an agent <laughs> and say it's sending an appointment, have the person come in and do the voice. It's like we got to be able to do it right then and there because a lot of people don't know, but we do the episodes in six days. Each episode is six days. So, yeah. so we we only have you know. We, we sort of add a necessity, and we know fully well that we're running out of voices, and that this character sounds like that one, and these all sound like that one, but we, it's just out of necessity. Who, who's Terrence and who's Philip? We always forget. We always <laughs> I think I'm Terrence. Yeah, I think I'm Philip. I love and again, I think there's been plenty of shows where we switched it and we forgot. Is, <laughs> is it true that, um, that, that Cartman kind of derived from Stange at Stone sounding a bit fatter? Yeah, I mean, really, that's all it was. And Scarman's voice has changed a lot, actually, too. But, you know, it, it, it was just... It just started out making fun of fat people. Yeah, yeah. That's so it's always a good place to start, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. The, Cartman's one of those characters, though. He falls into the Homer Simpson category. Everyone thinks they can do an impression of that Right, person. right, right. Including Colin. Does, does, that, annoy, does that annoy you? The, 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 the people will ultimately do these impressions to you before they've even said hello? No, well, Trey loves it. If you see Trey on the street in London, come up and do Cartman to him. He loves it. You keep a tally, keep a tally chart of how <laughs> yeah. Favorite thing. Yeah, when people do, I'm just, I just start jumping up and down and get all giddy, and I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, here we go. Uh, Robert in South End says, um, which one of the two you came up with the seeds for Team America? We were watching the Thunderbirds, and we, we both sort of had the same reaction, which was, I was like, I kind of remember this show, and Matt was like, yeah, I kind of. We didn't know, we couldn't say what it was. We didn't really remember it very well. But, uh, as we were watching it, we're like, this is so cool. And especially, you know, in today's days when everything's computer generated, yeah. we're just like, look at that. It's a real little car. That's a real little guy. <laughs> we're like, this is amazing. This is awesome. And as we kept watching it, we're like, God, this is really boring. I can't really watch this anymore. And, and after about 15 minutes, we're like, I, I really can't watch anymore. And so we started going, you know, imagine that with like a sweet script. That'd be really cool. Well, as we got into doing the movie, it was like when you do jokes with puppets, it's really not that funny, you know. <laughs> but if you do serious stuff about like terrorism and world events, it seemed to be funnier to us. Mm. Yeah. So the politics of this movie became like kind of like a backdrop, if that makes any sense. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was like we just it, it felt like doing real stuff and like more gritty kind of stuff made the movie better. But three sides part you wanna you've attacked at every infrastructure of American life. Is it that, that post nine eleven it was the one thing you wanted that that the last taboo? In many ways, it was it was almost like an open goal for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really like, okay, here's the one thing we can't really make joke about or make fun of, and that's yeah. always just been our philosophy: is like anything you can talk about, you can make fun of, and yeah. that's because that's that's how we talk to each other. I mean, anything and. You know, people without a sense of humor, they think if you're making fun of something, it means you don't care about it and you don't think about it. And it's actually, in fact, you're talking, about, fact, it, you're talking about it and thinking about it a lot more. It, you, you have to really think about something and talk about it in order to make fun of it. You yeah, know? <laughs> There's not a lot of politics to talk about in, like, The Animal starring Rob Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we could do that. But, you know. <laughs> That's a classic, classic, though. Rob Schneider. Yeah. Is <laughs> <you're> <laughs> dear, dear, dear. <laughs> dear, 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 dear. <laughs> He's, He's a carrot. Yeah. <laughs> what did he just say? What did he just say about people doing impressions? Oh, exactly. yeah. So if you do see him in the streets of London, I've never had derp to derp guy. I'd be stoked on him. <laughs> hey, you're derp to derp. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's um, Paul in uh, Bally Castle wants to know, um, Team America kind of takes the mick out of celebrities well, and then um, who are the celebrities you've met over the years that you've really cheesed off and the ones that you wanted to kind of use in this film and sort of have a bit of a dig? Well, the thing, like, celebrities all have 
uh, publicists. Yeah. So they all know. We oh, as soon as we make fun of a celebrity, uh, no matter how we do it, we almost always get the phone call the next day going, "Oh, they loved it." You know, and it's like, and you you read an article in the paper going, "Ben Affleck thought his portrayal was hilarious. He's such an awesome guy." You know, it's like that. They they all have these people that to swing it that way because it, they all know it's like, okay, I need to look like I'm in on the joke. You know, and yeah. so. And the only, you know, the only person that really got an mad was uh, Sean Penn, who wrote us an angry letter, which no. was, yeah, it was great. He wrote us an angry letter before he saw the movie, before it came out. <laughs> but we had heard the story that, uh, because we had this trailer that played in, in the States that was basically like, uh, you know, it said who was in it. It was like Sean Penn, you know, and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. And so we heard that he was at this party, and he was like, what did those guys, what did they do to me in that movie? What did they do? I'm going to sue them. I will sue them. And they're like, calm, calm down, Sean. It's all right. Don't worry about it. And then right before the movie opens, we get this letter that's like, you think th th you think this stuff is funny? You, you, you want, I'll take you to Iraq. I, I will take you to Iraq, and you can see what I saw, and I'm the father of children. And it was seriously just like, okay, I thought Matt wrote it at first because it was he says like the same stuff he says in the movie. And he seriously was just like just furious, and it just made us laugh for about a week and a half. I don't even saw like a week ago in The Guardian that uh, they had a puff piece about how uh, Sean Penn has a sense of humor. <laughs> there was. There was like some publicity driven thing where it's like his his friends say he's one of the funniest guys to be around. Yeah. If you could just have a beer with him you'd see how funny he is. <laughs> Sean Penn doop doop doop. See then he would have a sense of humor. That would resurrect his career. Oh. Um, were there any other celebrities that you approached to do voices in Team America that sort of said yeah. No, but what uh, Alec Baldwin did, he he called and said, "Hey, I saw the trailer. I'm I, I want to, uh, I want to do my voice." And everybody's like, "We don't want you to do your voice. We found someone who does it better." And, <laughs> and it was like, but it was another attempt. It's like, I, okay, I'll, I'll get I'll be in on the joke, you know. And it's yeah. like, but then we can't rip on you as much, so yeah, can't <laughs> be in, you can't be in on the joke. No. <laughs> they, they they look control of it. Um, Chloe and Battersea, uh, which is in London, uh, wanted to know back in the day, uh, you two formed a band called DVDA. What did they sound like? And be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably the wrong people to ask. Yeah, I don't. They were great. <laughs> yeah. It sounded just it was like Led Zeppelin meets the Stones. Uh, I'm here, and I thought they were awesome. <laughs> what, did they sound, what did they sound like? What kind of? Uh, what we're very we eclectic. Like? Yeah. Kind yeah. Like hepatitis C. Yeah. Mixed with some with Don Jovi. <laughs> 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 and Sean Penn. Right, well, listen, uh, we'll play a track uh, and then we'll talk a bit more. Okay, cool. We'll get your questions. Cool. We're with uh, Trey and Matt. Stop it. Stop it. Back in a second. You're coming cold. You're coming It's the Caesars jerking out on Radio 1. Let's get on with this. Before that, good Charlotte, the Chronicles of Life and Death. Brilliant. We're still here. It's Colin and Edith with you till four this afternoon. Uh, we're here with Trey and Matt. Thank you very much for sticking around. So many more questions. Um, quite a few uh, South Park ones coming up, if that's all right. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. We, can, we can usually we, answer those. We know about Great. That. <laughs> um, James in Glasgow wants to know, Trey, did you sing the theme tune at South Park? No. The theme song at South Park is actually sung by uh, Les Claypool at Primus. Right. That's how we were... Uh, you know, when we first got the show going, we were like, you know, we thought, well, maybe this could be an excuse to meet Primus. <laughs> we, actually, <laughs> we put a call out there and said, uh, could we get uh, Primus to do our theme song? And they're like, okay. We're like, oh, my God. That was honestly, still to this day, it's probably one of the coolest things that ever happened to us. Yeah. That, like, we were huge fans of that band. Get a TV show, and they agreed to do the theme song. Brilliant. And, and of course, Kenny's a great way to get really bad words and right, the theme Right, exactly. Too. We sort yeah, of change exactly. every season. Yeah. <laughs> so that, Les uh, wrote the song, Primus recorded it, he sings it. Yeah. No, Have you had a lot of that what kind of meeting people that you like? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, incredible. we've sort of met just about everyone we need to now. I think we're done. <laughs> it, gets a, it gets a bit tedious yeah, after a yeah. while. When the only people left on your list is Bob Marley and Clint Eastwood, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, one of them you're never going to meet. We met, we met Clint, but I want to meet the most selected guy. That's who I want to meet. Oh, <laughs> do you? We got his, I've got his, his shall I give you his number? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that guy's awesome. Yeah, yeah. we'll give his mobile number. give him a ring. He's funny if you phoned him up just randomly. Should we do it now? Should I run and get my phone? <laughs> oh, no, uh, you, you go and get your phone wheel. You go get your phone. We'll ask a couple more questions. We'll get him a ring. Sometimes he answers. Some, he, no. Sometimes he doesn't. Um, uh, all right. Uh, the, the, Lars and Cardiff and the subject of Kenny. Just let me get my bleep button ready. He says you actually did kill Kenny. 
Um, and it was Butters and Timmy sort of intermittently replaced him. What was the idea to kind of say, right, enough of killing Kenny, let's kill him? It, it just was that. It was, it became really, you know, after 70 or 80 episodes, <laughs> it became the last thing we would do every week. We're like, okay, we've done the whole episode. How do we kill Kenny? <laughs> and it became this burden. And because, like, we've always done with the show, as soon as it becomes a rule, we start wanting to break it. So, I don't know, we just decided to actually have Kenny die and then use that as an excuse to like bring in all these other boys yeah. and kind of explore these other Kenny characters. was sort of becoming like a lamp, you know, which is like he he's a, he's a good character and there's like a few shows there's actually a show we just did the last run where it really kind of centered around Kenny and you really got into him as a character, but it's a really hard thing to do when your character can't talk, you know yeah. what I mean? So, and it's and it's easy to do a few times, but you know, to try to do it every episode and and actually it was a really smart decision because what happened, we just did the commentary for that season, so it was really interesting to watch Kenny go away and Butters sort of come in and take his place, and Butters just really blossomed into this this yeah. character that now we can use whenever we want, and and you know we we just took the time to to make Butters into a, a, I think a really great character. Um, outside of the main four characters then of South Park plus Butters and Timmy, you can't have them. Who's your favorite character? You know the the one sort of on the outside that you love it when you can get him in an episode. It's it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty easy now when we have a scene with the, the other handicapped kid, Jimmy. Yeah, um, Jimmy's pretty because Jimmy can talk, and Jimmy's actually got quite a personality. And it's almost we know almost any time that Jimmy's in a scene that it's probably going to be funny. And <laughs> and uh, we actually just finished last season with a whole episode about him getting an erection for the first time and, and being super embarrassed about it and it was a it was a great episode it was really just jimmy i mean uh, okay well we're gonna ring uh avid marion okay. so we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see if we can get him up oh just just oh it was it was high just all the, just all the good stuff it was it was loads of when when you write no, when you write you cartoons derp, 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 yeah, yeah. Derp, oh, derp, God, yeah, i'm yeah. sorry about him <laughs> <laughs> real name lee 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 this really him? Yeah. I don't believe this. Oh, I'm dead busy. Can you please leave a message after the talk, please? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I love you. Bye. <coughs> at the tone, please record your message. When you have finished, you may hang up. Or press 1 to change your message. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, this is Trey Parker. Um, I, I do the, an animated show called South Park, and I did a movie called Team America. Uh, we're having a party on Thursday, <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> We're at this radio show right now, and uh, I just mentioned how I, I think you're brilliant, and, and we, we watch your stuff all the time, and I'd really love to meet you. So if you can come to the party, uh, it's at... No, it's at, at it's not, I, I guess I can't really say, but uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll have someone call you back, and I hope hope to, to meet you sometime. Doop de doop de doop. Really, something that is going we'll to be you now. brilliant. <laughs> oh, derp to derp, it must have been him. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> well, uh, we we asked you a couple more questions. Let you get away. We've had you here for ages. Um, a couple of strange ones. Uh, Neil in Durham says, Trey, your real name's Randolph. Did you change it after saying trading places? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've actually always been Trey. I've always been called Trey because I'm I'm Randolph Severn Parker the third. And so my parents uh, they make me the third and call me Trey. But apparently all my friends, it's my middle name's Severn from the, the river you guys have here. And Severn, my, yeah. Apparently my whole family's from Shrewsbury. Oh, Shrewsbury. Yeah. Tony in Bristol wants to know um, what's next. Uh, a big fat vacation. <laughs> That's basically, we've been going for the last yeah. three years, we've been going from Team America to South Park to Team America to South yeah. Park. And then Team America just kicked our asses. I mean, it was really the hardest thing we've ever tried to do, and it was brutal. And we sort of, we just finished the season at South Park. We don't have to go back till uh, October. So we're just going to take some time off and try to, you know, sort of just live n normally again to, so we have things to make fun of. <laughs> Well, you might see us around London Sound tonight. Brilliant. Off our asses. Brilliant. Excellent. Part of <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank in. you Thank very, you very much. much. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>